Hello and welcome to the Diamond Art Show with me, Sam Van Jean. I'm going to help you fall in love with this amazing hobby. What is diamond art? Basically, it's like painting by numbers, but by sticking tiny little rhinestones onto a sticky canvas that produces a beautiful, beautiful sparkly little picture. Um, they do come in all sizes from absolutely teeny tiny to massive and mahoosive ones. Um, so the more you get into this amazing hobby, the bigger you're gonna wanna get. So most of the pictures that you can buy, you can get them off the internet. All you need to do is put in diamond art into Google and you'll get a host of places. The majority of them all come from China. Um, Amazon, obviously you can get them in a couple of days. Other companies, because of shipping, will take you a couple of weeks to get to it. When they arrive, what have you got in it? What am I supposed to do with it? How do I make this amazing picture? I'm gonna show you exactly that. Most of the pictures will arrive in a normal, plain, padded envelope. I tend to write mine on top, and that's the size of the one that I've got. So that's 35 centimetres by 25 centimetres. Um, so it's a pretty small one. I'm working on a really large one at the moment, which is 40 centimetres by 70 centimetres, and I'll show you that later. So your kit's going to arrive, and you're going to open it up, and what comes inside? So obviously this is the picture. So this is the canvas. You need to roll it out because obviously it's been folded. And a couple of tips. Some people just put books on them to keep them flat. Or you take this plastic film, pull it back and immediately put it back on again. Take the other corner, pull it down and immediately put it back up again. With the other side, pull it down, pull it back up again put it down, put it back up again. And you can see it's not bouncing up like it was before, all right? When you want to work on it, put something hard on it to keep it down. You'll get this pack, all right? This is all the beads that I need to go on this picture. So as you can see here, you have lots of little codes, all right? And on the side here are the codes that correlate with these, all right? Now, some pictures will have a DMC number and that's related to cross stitch because each color with cross stitch has its own code. So it works the same in diamond art as well. Now on here, you'll see that you've got some different numbers and letters. So the L586, that is the um, company's number, their DMC number for this particular color of round diamond. As you can see, they're round. And then you've got number 14. So for me, number 14 is this one here, okay? Which is J. So I need to put those into a pot and whenever I come to a J on the symbols, which you can see are here, I'm going to need number 14, all right? Make sense? Perfect. So you need to open these up, use scissors, keep out of the way sharp objects from children, um, and you'll see that they're all cut together. All right, I'm not gonna open this one up yet because I've already uh, um, got some diamonds ready to show you. You can see there, so you cut down there, separate them all, and then you put that into pots, like so. All right, so this particular picture that I'm working on has different coding, as you can see from here. Okay, so my codes are different. That also came with the numbers on the side, uh, one to the end, and then um, it also came with these DMC numbers. And then there is another section, but I've covered it with tape, which actually tells you how many diamonds are in each, in each packet, which is quite funky actually for these ones. So you can use a Sharpie. These boxes, um, honestly, are the best and the cheapest boxes on the market to buy. You do not need to spend great fortunes um, on putting all of your diamonds in expensive organizers these plastic pots they come with four different separate ones um, so as you can see there this one's got four different colors and um, these ones here because I've almost finished the picture obviously I've gone out but all four of these were filled with the letter S and these ones with with those there so you can see I'm almost finished the picture now how do you put it on it some people like to put stickers on it and then uh, write with pencil so they can rub off the code with pencils when they're finished I prefer using sharpies just an ordinary sharpie um, per writing it on the boxes um, and then when I finish the picture I just use nail varnish remover to take it all off okay so once you've got 
your boxes and you've got all your stuff ready, then you can settle down to start your picture. But there are some other tools that you need to get yourself ready. What else do you get in the kit? You will always get a green tray. 90% of the time you will get a pink drill pen and 90% of the time you will get a one single square piece of wax. Sometimes you will have other tools that will come in like these things. Some of them will be smaller and some of them will be larger. These are called multi-placers and you can take off the nib of this pen and put these on there instead. Okay, these ones I tend to use all the time and on another video I'm going to show you how to use these properly. Okay, but for this um, video I'm just going to show you how to do these when you're first starting. So you'll take out your pen, I'm going to show you by using this one, this is my nice little funky one here. Okay, so you'll take your pen out and you will see you have this little bit of wax here. The wax has a film on the top of it. I cannot tell you how many people when they first start don't realize that there's actually a piece of film on it. So you can see obviously I've been playing with that one. So you just need to rub it gently and then the film will come back, okay? So <clears throat> once you've done that, you'll take your pen and you'll stick it in like that. Now, depending on the pen that you've got, depends on how many times you'll need to put it in but you'll see here eventually you can see try and focus it on here that it will start to fill up all right sometimes i like to do a bit and you can see there's a little bulge that just is there which is the wax that's sitting in the actual bit okay so you've got that if you're using square diamonds then sometimes your kit will come with a set of tweezers like so um the thinner the nib on the tweezers the better for if you're doing pictures that have got square diamonds which i have got on this one all right every kit will come with a green tray um i like these trays um because they've got a little spout on it so if um i know that i'm not going to need a lot of it then um i can just pour some beads in there and then easily pour them back which i'll show you in a second and then on bigger pictures i like to use a large Large tray and again if you buy a bigger picture sometimes not all the time but sometimes they will you will be lucky enough and they'll come with this but you can again buy those on most of the diamond art websites all over the place okay so you need to get the section of the picture that you're doing now if you're just starting a picture you might want to put a tape down on the side here now the reason why i say that is because just below the line here of where the first line of diamonds is it's sticky so if you're wearing a jumper and you're leaning on it like this you're going to get marks and it's going to get dirty so all you need is a bit of um, washi tape which is um, something like this okay um, they're quite cheap um, you can buy them all over the place. They don't, they're not good for sticking for anything else. You can buy them in arts and craft bits. And all you do is you obviously just lay it down at the end to cover. And then it's easy enough to be able to tear off. So it will cover that little bit of, of, of stickiness that's there. And then when you finish the picture, you take it all off and it's nice and clean all the way around before you frame it, okay? Otherwise, it will get a little bit dirty. Now, unfortunately, the washi tape that I bought is really rubbish and it's actually stained the picture. So, um, apparently, baby wipes are the things to use to be able to get rid of the stains. So, when I finish the picture, I will then do a video on taking it off and see what happens and see if I can fix it, okay? But in the meantime, it doesn't bother me at all um, because I'm still enjoying doing the picture at the moment. So, as you can see here, all my squares are all nicely lined up. When you first put squares down, they're never going to be in in order so do not panic by the time that you start filling up the sections they will um, all click together and they're all going to look absolutely amazing in like a mosaic style now let's show you how to actually place the diamonds onto the canvas when you pull back the film of your picture you will see colors and codes this is your canvas these are what go with the codes that you've written down and this here is sticky it's called poured glue and it lasts for decades so once you've framed it you shouldn't have to worry about any of the diamonds coming off as long as you've stuck them down properly um, so when you start as you can see obviously I'm 
this is I've only got a little bit left to go until I finished so um, I'm excited to show you what to do using this this section here where you can see I'm like this looks like a checkerboard it's called the checkerboard system it's really really good for squares and it's good for circles as well if you've got lots of the same color as you can see here so all these ones that I've done and these ones still to do are ease right and there's a lot of them so so you don't have to put them next to each other all the time doing it in a checkerboard system um, just makes it a bit more fun all right so you take your tray now remember there's different sizes you've got the small you've got the medium that comes with a little lid so once you've poured stuff in if you realize that you need to pour them back in they're easier to do but because you've got this nib here again you can it's quite easy to pour them in and doing it that way okay um, but I'm a fan of the big trays so I'm just gonna pour some into my bigger tray I don't necessarily need to put all of them in but when I'm on a, a roll literally I will pour the whole pot into this tray once your diamonds have poured in you need them to be in these little grooves so it makes it easier for you to pick up so all you have to do is give it a shake and a shimmy up and down left and right and eventually you will see they will start to find their own little space there's always going to be a little random one that's not there and if you when you're really into it like i am sometimes i like to keep on going until they're all there i think that's enough to be able to show you so as you can see they've all put themselves in little grooves now this particular pen that i came with came with a great little straightening tool and i use it now to just shimmy them up together make it a little bit more neater and then i can see it's easier to pick up when i want to all right so my best advice sorry for the plane but my best advice is to keep the tray as close to you as possible when you're putting down your diamonds okay so the pen that you've taken you don't need to be heavy-handed very lightly very lightly you pick one up with the pen like so right and then you just put it in its place easy simple as that okay so very lightly take it pick it up put it in its place very lightly do not need to be heavy-handed because if you are then it will just end up going all over the place now as you can see with the squares they're looking quite wonky you've got tweezers most of them will come with one a, a certain set of tweezers with square pictures you can just use those to straighten them out I, I it doesn't bother me that much because by the time that you filled in um all of the all of the diamonds they end up straightening up themselves okay it's really simple now you don't have to necessarily hold the tray like i am you can if you want to um, but i'm only doing it so you can see just how gently to pick them up and put them in their places okay quite easily um with the checkerboard system it's quite cute in there actually let me get some ease out okay so i'm going to put that on there so i know that's an s all right so i'm just going to put a couple of those down shake them out into there and then you can see here i'll just put them in spaces put them there and eventually they will just all straighten themselves out together i love it it's so cute I never used to like squares, but I've become slightly obsessed with this picture because obviously this is a massive picture and it's all square diamonds, but I absolutely love it. Okay, really easy. So when you're doing a checkerboard system with big ones, it makes it a bit more fun and you don't end up missing out as many codes as um, you would if you just randomly just stick them anywhere. You'll always end up with putting the color away and then suddenly working out, oh, I've missed one. Well, with the checkerboard system, it makes it a lot easier, okay? So you can see now I filled in some of the E's and the S's um, and I'm just left with uh, some of these. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this because of all the birdies in the garden, but when you've got ones that are left like that, it makes a little click. It's just a little satisfying, I don't know what it is, but it just uh, 
I like the little noise that it makes when it goes in, when it's the final ones that are left. Oops. So you can see they were all starting to straighten themselves up. So um, you can see there's a wonky one here. Right, I'll push that in there. And sometimes with the squares, you just need to give it a little squish and a little squish and they just fit in quite nicely. And they start to have this really lovely mosaic look when they all start to be filled in. And it's just so pretty. I'm quite lucky this picture is absolutely stunning, which I'll sort of show you in a second. Um, but I might wait until actually I've finished it because I haven't got much to go. So you can see there, all right, this is how you do diamond art. It's really simple. You just have to take your time. So that's my little introduction into diamond art. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gives you the little bit of the push that you need to get a picture, lay it out, take the time kitting it up. The kitting up is by putting all the diamonds into the little boxes, making sure you've got all the right symbols that go with the right numbers. That's kitting up. Take your time, put the TV on, put some music on in the background while you're doing it. Um, that's my favourite part and then sit down and settle and do it. You don't have to do hours at a time, you could do half an hour. I would say recommend definitely a minimum of half an hour and if your buzzer goes off 30 minutes later and you're still wanting to carry on then do and take your time. Don't worry if it looks a bit wonky, by the time you put that last diamond onto the picture it will look stunning. There's gonna be no more tips and hints. There's different types of pictures that you can get, part drills, um, full pictures, special diamonds. Um, I'm gonna tell you all about those in future videos. All right, have a great day. Um, I'll see you very, very soon. And I've decided I will show you what I've been working on. No, I'm not. I'm going to wait until I finish the picture before I show you the full effect because it's so stunning. Um, I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye bye.